Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chapter 1 of Book 3 of the Royal Rangers series, Duel at Araluen. Let's go ahead and get into it. Dad's outnumbered, and the enemy can see everything he does, Maddie said. He can't surprise them. I thought if I could get some men and stage a surprise attack on the enemy from the rear, that would give him a chance to break out. While the traitor Demon assumed that Maddie was confined in the South Tower with her mother, the apprentice ranger had discovered a series of secret tunnels and stairways that allowed her to move freely in and out of the castle. Maddie had infiltrated a Red Fox clan assembly and overheard Demon's plan to attack Castle Erluin and trap her father and his men in the north. Now she had returned to the castle and made her way to the ninth floor where she and Cassandra were formulating a plan to aid her father. Cassandra considered the idea. It could work, she said. But where would you find the men? Maddie shrugged. I thought maybe I could mobilize the army, she said. The castle maintained only a small regular garrison. The army was made up of men-at-arms, knights, and foot soldiers from the surrounding farms and villages who could be called up in the event of war or other danger. Cassandra shook her head. It'd take too long to gather them, she said, and Damone would quickly get wind of what you were doing. She stood up and began pacing the room, her brow furrowed in concentration. We can hold out here indefinitely, she said, but what we need to do is find a way to break your father and Gillen out of the, that hill fort. Then, if they march south and hit Damone from behind, we can break out here at the same time and attack him from both sides. You say there's a tunnel into the gatehouse? She asked. And Maddie nodded. Then you could lower the drawbridge and let Horace and Gillen's men in. She turned, pacing again, her mind working overtime. But if you're going to have to launch a surprise attack on the force holding Horace and Gillen, you'll need men. Good fighting men. The kind who will put the fear of the devil into those red fox scum. Her voice trailed off as she racked her brains for an idea. Then, her brow cleared, and she looked at her daughter with a wide smile on her face. And I think I know just the men you need, she said. Cassandra moved to the window, looking out over the green parkland below. There was a positive note in her voice that hadn't been there previously. And Maddie looked up curiously. So tell me, Maddie said. The Scandians, her mother replied. For a moment, Maddie was confused. What Scandians? Hal and his men, the Heron Brother Band. Cassandra's manner was becoming more positive by the minute. They're due back from the coast any day now. But why should they help us? Maddie asked. Because they're old friends and allies. We helped them when the Timujai tried to invade their country years ago and we organized the ransom when the Aridans captured their Oberjarl. They owe us, and they're not the kind of people to forget a debt. If you say so, Maddie didn't share her mother's confidence that the Scandians would immediately come to their aid. But Cassandra knew the Sea Wolves better than she did. There was another point, however. Aren't there only twelve of them? Cassandra smiled. Twelve Scandians. Your father says they're the best troops in the world. If a dozen of them hit the Sonderlanders from the rear in a surprise attack, they'll cause the sort of panic and confusion you'll be looking for. Take my word for it. I suppose you're right, Maddie conceded. But how will I get in touch with them? Cassandra walked over to a large-scale map of Erlu and Fief on the wall. Maddie followed her and waited as her mother studied the map running a finger along the river Seamath as she talked to herself. Let's see. They headed down the Seamath to the sea. The wrecked wolf ship was here. She stabbed her finger on the coast at a point south of the mouth of the Seamath. Hal said they'd be back in around ten days, so you've got a few days left. She traced the path of the winding river back inland, stopping at a point where it took a sharp bend to the south. She tapped the southern headland, formed by the apex of the curve. Here, I'd say. This would be the best point for you to intercept them. 
You should see them coming for some time. That'll give you time to attract their attention. Maddie studied the point on the map for a few seconds. The promontory did seem like the best choice, close enough for her to reach in good time to intercept the heron, and with a good clear view downriver. It was sufficiently distant that Damone would have no inkling about what she was doing. I'd better get going, then, she said. Her mother raised her eyebrows. What? Right away? Yes, I'll go while it's still dark. That way there's less chance that Damone's sentries will see me. I'll pack some provisions for the trip and be on my way, she said. Cassandra nodded, and assuming Horace and Gillen managed to break out of the fort, what's your plan then? We come back here, and I bring a small party through the tunnel under the moat. Once we're inside the walls of the castle, there's a hidden stairway to the gatehouse. We'll lower the drawbridge. After that, it'll be up to Dad and his men. And once they're inside the castle walls, Cassandra said, I'll bring my men down the stairway and hit the red foxes from behind. She touched the hilt of the katana that was thrust through her belt in its scabbard. I rather fancy the idea of having Damone at the end of my sword. Half an hour later, with the sack of food slung over her shoulder, Maddie stood by the door into the secret stairway. Cassandra stood beside her. She was loath to let her daughter go, having only just discovered that she was safe. She gestured toward the door. Maybe I could come down to the tunnel entrance with you, she said. Mum, it's eighteen vertical ladders. Do you really want to climb down all those steps, then climb back up again? Maddie asked her. Cassandra shook her head ruefully. Not really. Just, oh, I don't know. Just take care of yourself. Maddie nodded several times, not trusting herself to speak. Then, she quickly embraced her mother, opened the door, and disappeared into the dark stairwell. All right, that's going to be the conclusion of Chapter 1. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time in Chapter 2. God bless, and have a good one.